Ah, you must be here for the bonk. <laughs> so to speak. Bonk's adventure. Uh, that's what that garbled text at the top says. It's Japanese, as you can see. Uh, I haven't changed the level on it, even though it says easy level. I think that's just the default. Um, and you can select any one of these 21 levels to start off with. And uh, you may recognise that little fella there. But before we get to him, let's talk about the challenge itself. Because uh, I got admon admonished <laughs> last week. Because uh, someone came to my channel and I said, you know the rules by now. And they didn't. And they told me off and said they're never going to watch another video of mine again. Which is a bit rude. Um, but also, I was a bit rude because I just assumed that uh, no one would fresh would come onto the channel. Um, but indeed they did. So, uh, yes, the rules are this. Basically, you can have as many practice runs as you want. Um, but as soon as you press record, uh, it's just you and two credits. Um, once you've used those credits up, that is your row. row? You'll go done and then um, you have to upload it onto the Facebook group, which the details will be down below. And then um, you will you win? Who knows? But I tell you what will happen is you will get uh, your name in the wheel for the next week. And perhaps your game will come up next week and you can show off how good you are at it. Or you can just introduce people to something that's a bit esoteric and strange like I have here. Um, is this esoteric? Not really, because obviously it's based on a highly successful um, platform game series, uh, particularly on the TurboGrafx and PC Engine, uh, called PC Kid, BC Kid, Bonks Adventure, more names than Tommy Robinson, just as handy with his headbutt. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, this came out courtesy of Kenneco Co. Uh, in 1994. So the first PC kid came out on the PC Engine, I think, in about 1989. So this is five years later. It looks all swish. It looks all posh. It's very colourful. Um, it's, uh, in as I said, it's an entirely different game. There's no other game like this in the series. This didn't come out on any form uh, home formats, this particular version. I don't even think it has come out on... Um, any of those packs you get, you know, like the packs, because I don't know if Kenico um, have a particularly <laughs> legendary arcade career, so that's probably why it's not, it's not like a Taito or a Data East or a Capcom or a Konami, it's, um, but um, this game is pretty good. It's got the same mechanics as the PC Engine one, um, which is a, a brilliant little um, platformer game and probably one of my favourites of all time, purely because uh, in the first game on the PC Engine, you could go through a dinosaur's guts and headbutt its poo out of the way so you could escape its bum hole. Um, so obviously that was always going to appeal to me. Um, but yeah, this is a, it's a strange little game because the levels in PC Kid or BC Kid or Bonk um, were a lot longer than this. These are little stubby little levels. Um, and uh, obviously the, the nature of kind of selecting uh, you'll route through the game. You can choose any of the 21 levels and face any of the bosses after three of those levels. Um, we'll see. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, it's very unusual for the series. Um, but as you can see, it's packed with character. The the main character looks like a, a thug version of Charlie Brown. Um, and uh, who doesn't like headbutting their way to glory? Um, but yeah, there's lots of little bonuses in this one. Um, lots of things to collect. Those little smiley faces give you um, bonuses at the end, as you can see, uh, which might get you an extra one up. Um, and also those act as a protection like our type. Um, so if like something um, is being aimed at your head, those will get in the way. Um, or it's a, either that or a bit like Sonic. Um, although you can still take damage even if you've got some of those. So yeah. Um, should we go on to the general facts of course of the action um, and so I thought about this and I thought Bonk's adventure and I could do well strange people places people um, have um, rutted but I thought we'd uh, have a bit of a history lesson and look at um, Neanderthal sex um, because um, yeah why not um, I mean they're handsome fellas aren't they so this is from a uh, BBC article from 2021. Uh, Neanderthals, uh, not a lot really is known about them because obviously they all died out quite a long and substantial time ago. Um, but being a savage time, it's probably likely that a lot of the sexual intercourse 
wasn't that consensual. Um, sex between early modern humans and Neanderthals was probably not that rare even 37,000 years ago. Um, Neanderthal DNA can be found in everyone alive today, um, even African descendants who wouldn't have come into contact with them um, because obviously they were based around kind of like Europe, and North America and Asia, but not really in the African subcontinent area. Um, incest wasn't uncommon um, and the reason they know this is because they found skeletons with deformities that are inherent in um, incest animals that commit incest so uh, bones weren't formed properly um, uh, club feet that kind of thing um, was found on the skeletons turning the page yeah see that professional here you can hear the rustling of paper can you hear that yeah, um, tiny microbes were found in the mouths of Neanderthals um, that seemed to indicate either shared food or kissing had occurred between uh, an early man and a Neanderthal. Um, so, yeah, there was, apparently there was uh, some human getting off <laughs> with a gorilla man or a Neanderthal, not a gorilla man. Um, a early version of HIV may have occurred due to Neanderthal and human relations. Um, we don't know what Neanderthal genitals look like, but I bet you want to. Um, but um, to humans, uh, they're, they're thought to be closer to humans than the barbed phalluses of our great ape brethren. There you go, there's an extra genital fact there, because I didn't know chimpanzees have barbed penises like a cat. Lovely. Um, the other for women likely breastfed babies until they were 14 months old, which is a lot earlier than uh, we do today. So um, straight off the, the breast milk and on to the meat for you little little chappy, little toddlerman, little toddler Neanderthal. Um, and 20% of their DNA still exists in humans today. So that wasn't a particularly funny um, genital facts, but it was, I think, um, garbled nonsense. But it was also um, something I looked up. So at least some of it is true, or at least speculated to be so. And look at me, I'm whacking a mole. Uh, why not? Um, it's uh, got a helmet and sunglasses, as uh, moles were known to do back in the day. Um, but um, yeah. As I say, this is one of my one of the my favourite games on the system uh, originally, the PC Engine. Even that's completely different, um, but um, it is um, certainly worth playing if you get your emulator handy um, or a PC Engine Mini. Get this booted up because it is a good fun game, um, and it, um, it is certainly on the PC Engine Mini, the first game in the series, the one that started it all. And this is a nice little update for it. Um, lots of sports involved in this as well. If you take the ball and you put it through the hoop there, um, and there's an American football version of it, and there's a soccer one as well, or football to normal people. Sorry, Americans. I, I'm joking. I'm joking. Apparently, lots of people got really upset with... Um, there was someone who modded the new Fallout London and changed all the soccer, <laughs> all the football references to soccer, and that apparently upset um, those of us overly sensitive British types. Um... It's called football. Oh, shut up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just a different name. It's fine. Uh, probably. Um, but yeah, what's coming up on the channel this week? Well, we have got California raisins. Um, I'm not giving them away free. There's not, not, not a prize of a tiny... And I'm not putting anything in your lunchbox either. It is... Uh, basically, there was an NES game that didn't... Near, well, it came close to coming out, but it didn't come out in the end because... Um, of falling raisin sales apparently in North America um, but you can find out more about that in the video we've got coming up this week um, it's nice to get away from sports to be honest uh, which uh, has been uh, very dominant on my channel in the last few months because of the Euros and the Olympics um, so yeah really nice to do uh, something completely unrelated to sports unless of course we eat raisins to aid in your digestive system and help you run faster because um, if you eat too many raisins you want to go for a poo and then you run to the toilet and uh, this is my level of humour 
and I should be ashamed of myself. Um, but um, yeah, so um, have I run out of things to say again? Incredibly so. Um, yeah, platformers though. Um, have you got like a favourite platformer um, on a on a lesser populated, a less popular system like the Turbo Graphics? Can you think of better? That's a the question for you. Can you think of a better platformer on the PC Engine than one of the Bonk games? I'm sure there is one. I would like to find one, um, and uh, I will um, take he heed to whatever you tell me, and I will um, go and play it. Um, does Legendary Axe count? Probably, yeah. It's got platforms in it, swinging ropes and things like that. Um, I quite like Legendary Axe, if you've ever played that, that's good. Um, what was my other favourite sort of PC Engine games? Oh, now you're asking, as in uh, me, I'm asking myself. Um, uh, I really, I didn't like Chan and Chan, even though it has scatological humour, because uh, it was a bit basic. Um, but yeah, plenty of really good shoot em ups on there. Um, Blazing Lasers, I know everyone says that one. Um, Dragon Spirit, always like Dragon Spirit. I actually like, there was, there's one that everyone hates now called Moto Racer, I think. But I used to really like that. Actually, I went to play that recently though and it wasn't very good. Um, so maybe I'm remembering it a bit too well when it doesn't really deserve the respect that I've given it in retrospect. Um, there wasn't any good wrestling games, the Battle Royale game was terrible. Um, there was a, a China, China Warrior, that was particularly bad. Uh, it had, like, amazing to look at, you were like, oh, look at the size of that sprite, you wouldn't get that on the Spectrum or the NES, um, which are the two formats I owned before the PC Engine. Um, but um, yeah, really basic game, that one. Um, and what else was, what else did I have? Uh, good question, me. Thanks. I'm having a really in-depth conversation with myself, which is brilliant, um, as is the nature of doing these kind of long-form uh, playthrough videos where you've not written down enough to sustain the entire length of the video. Um, um, but I suppose I could tell you what I've got coming up after California Raisins, because uh, it's always good to know there's anything you should be looking out for um so yeah there's a pingu game on the playstation one i'll do a review of that very that's coming up very soon uh the rats which is based on um it's uh, it's my first 8-bit computer game in, um, video in a long time um, and i need to go back to doing more of them um and it's uh, basically based on the james herbert books and it's really cool really really cool um game incredible I, how they've adapted a a game sorry a book into a game um i couldn't fathom quite how well they managed to pull it off and how creepy that game is but um absolutely stunning for 48k spectrum game in a commodore 64 game um recommend watching that video because that's probably the most fun i've had making a video in a long time and one of the most su pleasant surprises i've had in um playing a game in recent history and then after that um uh, Murder She Wrote. <laughs> I've done a, I've finished that video today. Um, there was a Murder She Wrote game on the PC in 2009, and it's terrible. It's really bad, and it really doesn't uh, do the, the the license justice. And I'm not even a fan of Murder She Wrote. Um, and then uh, there's also I've done a, a game based on the Game Boy Advance version of Britney's Dance Beat. Um, so if you're a uh, uh, what were Britney's fans called? Spearites, Brit Britney fans, uh, but anyway, um, well worth um, looking into. I, I've only just used my first continue up now, um, but don't get excited um, about this and listening to me just waffle on because, um, yeah, I don't get beyond this bit. Um, and once again, I've provided spoilers of what happens in one of my playthroughs. Um, but please do join in because um, um, you get to discover all kinds of um, excellent and fun games this way just by um, playing these challenges and uh, it helps it helped me as well kind of look because uh, I like 
challenging the 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 the, 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 uh, the group by finding in really annoying, strange, weird, bizarre games. So it's a good challenge to find. Like you'll go through a main library, and you'll not only find weird games, but you'll find really fun ones as well. Um, and I think the arcade. Um, it's one of those like the main folder if you've just downloaded like a big chunky main folder there's so many games in there that you never would have seen out live in the streets you know every every arcade had like a wrestle fest and a street fighter 2 and a uh, you know like a like a driving game like a chase hq and that but then you, you find like these, these weird little esoteric games like i'm sorry and um uh, what was that escape kids and um there's a, a adventures of mr flea there's, i've got videos of these all on my channel you can you can go and find them if you want um but there's some really fun obscure little arcade games and it, it, I, I reckon if you're a retro gamer that you've probably done that already you've probably gone through your main folder already but i always recommend to people like if they uh, want to do some uh, download an illegal <laughs> big batch of files of old arcade games then at least make the most of your criminal endeavors and uh, enjoy yourself some excellent and very fun uh, hidden gems as metal jesus would say because there are plenty um, to be found in Maine. Um, and this challenge is a really good way to discover those because some people will do the work for you and also I think it's a really good way, like if you're not really confident and you want to start up like a YouTube channel, it's a really good way to start doing that because the um, editing involved with it is fairly minimal, you know, you just, you can either put like an intro in front of it or not, you can talk over it like me, you can not bother doing that, but you can just upload it and uh, yeah, it's a really good way to learn. Um, but that is the end of my go, um, but I wanted to show you this first um, because um, I struggled and then I realised I could put my name in. <laughs> in um, I, c I can use kanji and get my, work my way around it so it looks like my name. So there's the J, there's the A, and uh, there's the E. So there, I w I'll see if anyone else manages to put their name in this week. Um, but please join us again next week for another challenge that will be just as waffly, but probably won't last as long. Um, but until next time, like, subscribe, and case thanks, bye.